Hey guys, welcome to vlog day. I don't even remember, but it is freshly cut grass here at Olivet, and we're gonna run through it. You wanna join us? Let's go. <laughs> One, two, three. Yeah! <laughs> Yeah, RA is a resident assistant, and they're literally there to assist the residents. It's a very clever name. <laughs> we thought about changing it a few years ago, but uh, it's pretty universally accepted. Every school you're going to have that has a housing resident component to it, they have resident assistants, and they have residents life staff. Now, some of those staffs at different schools is very minimal, it's very basic, it's just check in, check out, I'm here for emergencies. We do all that. But we take it to the next level because we believe that that housing experience, that residential experience can really change somebody's life. I mean, my life was changed because of my RA, which is why I even got into this role in the first place and worked my way up and here I am. But the uh, resident assistant is a student just like everybody else. Do you know most of the individual RAs or not really? Do I? Um, I do. I, I don't know. There's 90 of them. I don't think I know every, all 90 of them by name. Um, but I do a lot, most of them. I know so most of them. The three that were centering our documentary on are um, Braxton Cook, mm -hmm. Stadium, Fontes, McLean, and Spencer Tong. Do you know those three? Yeah. Do you have any yeah. Like, brief statements you can <clears throat> say about them? They're all phenomenal. This is Spencer's first year. He's out in Stratford. He's doing a great job. S P E N C E R. Do you know the full name? Yeah. Dang it. Can we restart? No, you can keep going. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> uh, T O N G. I am the RA in Stratford 1011. Shamara is in McLean Hall with Melanie Brunig. Melanie's also one of our veteran RDs. And, uh, I think this is sh her, Ms. Shamara's second year as well. I went into my closet. I opened the door. I went into the bus. My pants were there. Person ever since these pants don't find me, and now that I find found them, I sorry, I don't know why I'm crying, but it's just so emotional. Braxton, <clears throat> he's out in stadium apartments, he's a returner. This is his junior year, and this is his second time being in RA. I've prayed over it. I hope that people learn new things and miss it. I don't know. I guess we got one more minute. I know there's at least three or four, hopefully. Maybe more. All three of those are great already, so I'm glad they're on the team. First question. Um, how long have you been on an RA? Like four weeks. And how has that process been for you being a new RA? Yeah, it's been interesting. Um, it's kind of weird because I lived with my RA last year, so um, in a lot of ways, I don't know, and I, I like, I, this is my first year being in an apartment too, so um, basically this whole year is new, so I've never really experienced what it's like to have an apartment RA at all, so everything's really new and I just have to kind of figure out how to, um, just how to react to everything. So what initially led you to being an RA? Yeah, so um, I applied after, at the end of my freshman year, um, m mostly just because I, I thought it'd be like a fun position. Uh, I think Spencer's a senior this year. I think he's, yeah, I think he applied before and he did not get it. And then he applied again and he got it. And that just goes to show 
it doesn't mean it, it's impossible. If you don't get it your first time, you can still do it. Um, and I didn't get it. Um, looking back on it now, I'm very happy I didn't get it. So um, I didn't apply at the end of sophomore year, um, even though it, it still was like in my mind, kind of like in the back of my mind, like I kind of still want to do this. Uh, and then at the end of junior year, I applied again. Um, and that's when I got accepted for this year. And just it being my senior year, it's kind of the last, I don't know, I guess in some ways the last chance I have to uh, give back to the university. Describe Strat. Strat, all right. Um, Strat has this stigma of being um, kind of where people want to go to really kind of be like alone or be not super involved in all of that. Um, and I think since being an RA, uh, I think in some ways that's true, but in a lot of ways it's not. I think there's a longing for community in Strat. Um, and that's something that I've, I feel like I've just heard that hasn't really been there. Um, and just being with the other RAs and the meetings that we have, that's something that we're really trying to work on. What is your favorite part about being an RA? Um, I think I've been an RA for two years now in the apartment setting, so I've been able to have a lot of different residents, a lot of different people that are from different areas of life with different majors, different things they like to do, and I think the biggest thing that I enjoy is creating relationships with my residents. Um, a lot of the guys that I have as residents I might have never met or never been friends with if it wouldn't have been for me being their RA, and the relationships become... Um, they can be as intentional as you want them to be, but they can also be as quick and easy as you want them to be. And so my favorite part is creating those relationships with my residents and then with the other RAs that I have in my group and with my RD and just relationships is huge when being an RA. So describe the process and requirements of becoming an RA. Yeah, so it, it all starts out with an application, just like a normal job, you would say. Um, you have an application, you have different people that you put on there as um, recommendations that will recommend you, um, and then you also put your RA's name on there as well. And so they'll call your RA um, and they'll talk to your RA about how you've been that year, um, especially if you're a freshman going into being a sophomore. So they will do the online application and there's a video process that they submit where they will take a video of themselves answering some questions, which is helpful for the staff because, like we said, we got 300 people. These RDs who are about to hire them may not know them very well. So do like a, a selfie video kind of a thing where they're answering some questions and running through different things and sharing about them. So they'll do those videos. And then there's a formal interview process where they'll come up and meet in front of the RDs and answer questions. And those are measuring different skills, knowledge, and abilities that they have to do the job. And, how well they would do and what that would look like. And, and so you go through that and then you put the different apartments or different um, halls that you want to be hired in and after that you wait and see if you hear from a RD on whether they want to hire you or not. So it's pretty pretty anticipating um, way to do it because you're always waiting for the next step to see where it could go. So yeah. So what kind of conflict do you deal with on a regular routine basis? Yeah, um, I'd say the biggest thing like personally that every RA would say that they deal with is time management. Um, we're being pulled a lot of different places. We're honestly on clock 24 seven. All of our residents have our numbers and our emails and they can contact us anytime they need help. Um, and that's what we're there for. I mean, that's, that's what our job, that's what our ministry entails. Um, so definitely time management is a big one, but also there's a lot of hard conversations that you have with residents. Um, they're all dealing with things in their lives that I'm not dealing with myself. And so sometimes it's, it's hard to be able to um, be with them in that time, but you really have to try to put yourself in their shoes and listen to them and let them speak and just let them pour out to you. And so that, that's hard. That's hard sometimes. It's also really um, a good opportunity and really humbling to be able to do that as well. They are on the clock 24-7, deal with everything from roommate drama to flaming Easy Mac. Please put your hands together and welcome Shimada Fanchez and Josiah Snyder. Hey! Okay, I want to 
want to clarify. I totally butchered your name, but I want you to say it <laughs> correctly. Uh, my name is Shimada Funch, but it's okay. Everyone says it wrong, so I'm used to it. How, where you're an RA at and how long you've been an RA? This is my second year as an RA in oh, McLean man. Hall. McLean. I, I told you this. I was a transfer, and I did my time in McLean for the first year. Nice. Yeah, it was a good place. Yeah. Good place to, to grow. It's the best. Um, well, <laughs> um, so RAs do a ton on this campus, and, and sometimes it gets overlooked. Mm. Yeah, do you guys agree? Indeed, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so can you tell us some of the responsibilities you have as RAs? Yeah, uh, as RAs, when you sign up a contract, it gives you a basic list of what you're expected to do. Yeah. These include room checks, clean room checks, you have to lock the doors, and don't forget to unlock them in the morning because mm -hmm. we don't want alarms to go off. Fire alarm just happened. It's, this was actually the fire drill. We woke up by sound. The back door is still alarmed. We have to go close it. Uh, you also have to do floor dinners, floor events, and also sometimes you have to do some Bible study, get that yeah. Jesus part in. How did you two become RAs? Well, in the beginning, I did not want to become an RA. I was like, ah, I don't like people that much, so I'm <laughs> not gonna do it. But on the week that it was the meeting to be an RA, um, everyone on my floor was like, Shimada, you should totally do it. You should do it. And I was like, no, guys, please stop. <laughs> and then the RAs themselves were like, hey, we think you'd be a good fit. You should just go to the meeting and see what happens. So then I talked to a friend, I forced her to come with me and I was like, you have to, I don't feel comfortable. So I go in, I sit down. The first sentence I hear, I was like, oh, had an epiphany. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And I decided to apply and here I am. Yeah. Still use the time that you're given, even when it's hard. Um, I think that's one of the, the biggest things as an RA, is that sometimes you have to humble yourself and understand that it's not about you. It's about the way that God's going to move. And that's why, even when there's only one or zero that show up, I pray for the building and I pray for my residents, because God still moves even if it's not through me. Absolutely. Despite that, do you ever get upset or discouraged by it? Um, I think, like, a lot more. Last year than this year, I got very discouraged, um, just because there was it was a constant like nobody showing up. Um, but I've I've learned specifically through my RD, um, who actually kind of told us this last year, and I learned it last year, is that like this time is set here. You set this time, so use it no matter what. And so my discouragement still comes, but then it goes away as soon as I realize that God. God can still move in this time that I've set aside for my residents. I've, I've learned that you can't be negative about it, otherwise you're going to be negative toward your residents, you're going to hold grudges against them, and that's wrong. That, that can ruin a relationship that you might have with them or that you want to make with them. Do you ever feel not supported? Um, I am lucky enough to have an amazing RD, um, and he he's where I get my support. So this year I... This year and last year, I felt supported all the way, just because they, they're they always there to back me up. Um, they're always there to talk to, no matter what. Um, and really, even though it's not on their contract, most of the time, they're on call 24-7, and that's not on their contract. So, yeah, I've never felt unsupported, which is really good. So explain to me a little bit about the show prep thing you were just doing. Mm -hmm. Just like what goes into recording at Shide. Yeah. So um, one thing we learned in class was that before you do any show, it's good for you to show prep. So show prepping is basically just figuring out the content of what you're going to talk about on air. So I do my show prep on little circles and each circle is an hour and in each hour I speak about four times, sometimes six or seven depending on the hour and 
we have to have content but it has to be like good content and content that kind of matches what we stand for as a radio station so the thing that will relate most to the audience and who's listening and then I transfer into I give it my spin <laughs> and then I write it out and then we go back and we say it I feel that any of the stuff that you like learned from your show prep that you've sunshine does any of that apply to your residents at all or is that a stretch Ooh. <laughs> You know what? Everything can be apl- applicable in life. Um, yes. Actually, thinking about it. Wait, yeah. So, it's more of like the prepping when you like have a hard conversation or you're gonna meet a resident or you have to do this. So, you kind of prep yourself before. So, I either like talk to the RD or I ask from other RAs that have been in that same situation or... If I've had a conversation with the resident before, and I'm going to have another one, I kind of go about that and I go back and see, oh, what did I do good? What is the best part of this conversation that I can add into what's coming? So yeah, kind of. <laughs> it's stressful, but I hope you went okay. Well, we here on Shine FM are going to continue to play the music that you love and hopefully it will give you some encouragement. We have starting right now, Need to Breed Forever on Your Side on Shine.fm. Alright. Hey, get me in the shot. Come on, Colleen. <laughs> Be ready up front. Be ready. Yeah. Tell me about what you did this semester when it comes to volleyball. Volleyball, okay. Um, I played on two volleyball teams this semester. Uh, one was outdoor and then one was indoor four on four. Um, I was not planning on doing the second one, but then you slash a resident uh, asked me if I would play on the team and so I said yes um, because I wanted to help kind of build that relationship uh, not only between us but like I guess like in the building Um, because I do I do want like residents whether they're on first or second floor to feel like we have like a person we can have a personal connection so I agreed. Um, both seasons weren't great, but that's okay. It was fun. Pop! Pop three! One, two, three! Pop, pop! pop! <laughs> like sing bedtime stories, uh, sing bedtime songs for our residents. So we get like normal songs or sometimes just two sentences that are very popular mm-hmm. and we turn them into bedtime songs. Both would know. <laughs> We can make it into a bedtime song, because that's our goal. We want to sing people bedtime stories. Bed- sing people bedtime songs. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. I think that's too basic. We should do alma mater. The ONU alma mater. The <laughs> ONU alma mater. I don't know it. Mm, how about, who let the dogs out? Let's see. What's the Umbrella? Ooh. When you go? Umbrella? No, 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 when the Brainstorm. sun shine, we'll shine together. Don't click. She's the one who comes up with the lyrics. She's the one who comes up with the lyrics, and I just play with her. Mm-hmm. So you have to do We're that. We're a team to die. Name another iconic duo. I'll wait. <laughs> Are asleep? Yeah. We just try to present them with songs and they it's okay though. They're never asleep. There will be a next time. So goodbye or good night? Good night. Good night. Okay. I've been saying goodbye and I'm like, this is um, wrong. Uh, good night. He's probably asleep. He's probably asleep. Are you awake? Are you awake? Okay, perfect. Right, great. Can I come sing you a song? We're here to wish you a really, really good night. Oh, That's what short and sweet, laughing. just like we like it. Yes, short, sweet, real quick. Was the one last time? No. This hey, is man. way better than last time. Heck yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Here we go. You ready for the ceremony? Six, five, six, seven. On the third floor of the McLean Hall, the ladies sleep tonight.
Thank you. We love you. And our lyrics just keep them close to your heart because they are truth. It's true. It's true that we're speaking into your souls. So have a good night. Concert tomorrow, 8 a.m. in the bathroom. Show up if you want. If you don't want to, that's okay. We'll be back either way. Have a good night. Good night, guys. Sorry we turned on the lights like that. <laughs> she wanted that, though. <laughs> Do you want to explain your event? Yeah. Um, it was an open invitation to anyone and everyone. Uh, so it's not necessarily a building event, but I had some residents here. Exhibit A. Um, but yeah, it just was an open invitation to everyone just to come and eat cereal together because a lot of people like cereal, so just hanging out and eating cereal. Uh, that's kind of it. It was BYOC, uh, but you didn't have to. So, we, I mean, we have a ton of cereal already, so. Yeah, that's it though. About two hours of just eating cereal and hanging out. Three, two, one! You're right, that was fast. <laughs> So I started working for admissions last year, my junior year. Um, mostly all I really knew was that they gave tours to um, prospective students uh, and they worked Purple and Gold Days, which was just for seniors uh, who are coming to visit. Um, and it sounded like a really fun job and I love all of that and I love showing people and telling people about all of it. Uh, so I applied, got the job um, and, and it was, is mostly tours and campus visits and uh, building those connections with prospective students. Um, but there's also the uh, in the office part of the job that I didn't really think about, which is 
anything from making coffee to checking the bathrooms to make sure they're clean um, to helping like the counselors or um, other admissions staff with projects that they might have, um, folding t-shirts, organizing boxes, a lot of kind of like, yeah, office work, like minuscule tasks, I guess. Um, but I've grown to love those tasks too. Um, I just, any way I can help the office run smoothly. Do you feel that you've grown? And if so, in what areas? Oh yes, I definitely feel like I have grown. Beginning of the year, I was very anxious not knowing how everything was gonna go because I had a new team and a new floor, new residents. But I've grown as a person on how I carry my relationships and how I interact with people. The biggest thing that I now I'm very proud of is how I am of a communicator. Um, when my residents come to me, I have learned that now I get to just have conversations with them and have them express themselves and not so much be um, giving them advice when they don't ask me to, but now I know where is my, um, where do I stand when they talk to me. I know how to just carry a good conversation, a conversation that is good for them, but good for me as well as their already, so I get to get the most of it. So I think that's how one way I have grown, especially in my floor and with my residents. How do you think you have grown in the past four months? Um, I think it's gotten quite a bit easier to talk with the residents um, through even just like mandatory things like fire safety, um, clean room checks, or whatever it may, might be. Um, it's just been a lot easier to get to like know them. So I feel like when I go and do those things or if I'm just checking in, um, it's a lot easier to kind of spark those conversations. And um, so I've seen the community kind of grow in that aspect um, in myself and in the building, which is really nice. Um, myself, I feel like I've been able to get more outside of my comfort zone, uh, which is good. So I've grown in the area of um, in leadership for sure, because something I've always kind of struggled with was not feeling like I had enough authority for whatever position I'm in so I mean I have a bunch of examples from like ministry or whatever um, but this one I at the beginning didn't feel like I had I had the authority to like uh, explain the rules to them or tell them no or things like this yeah, yeah. and then he told me while someone was fucking from the screen I, 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 no, no, to be fair, you already pressed the button. I had already hit it. And I was yeah. Like, oh, no. Good, good yeah. Bigfoot found on the <laughs> Is all of this worth it? The money, the struggle, the time commitment, but sometimes people don't show up. Why is it truly worth it? That right there. I mean, to watch guys that would never interact with each other interact together, um, to be able to create relationships with guys like that are across the hall that I never would have met. Um, to be able to have hard conversations with people that I never would have had com hard conversations with. It's, God gives you so many opportunities, um, and that's why it's worth it. Yeah, it's worth it to impact people's lives um, and to be impacted. Um, I mean, I had a resident the other day text me and he said, he said, you always ask us how we're doing, but I want to know how you're doing. And so it's like, yeah, yeah. God, God uses your residents to impact you, and you can impact them. Is this type of leadership so worth it and so fulfilling oh, yeah. and rewarding? Um, good question. I have a note right here from my. This was a guy. I was an RA. My. Chapman Hall my sophomore year and every night I would go by his room and I would check in with him his name is Alex and pretty much the extent of our relationship was at room checks it's not that we didn't hang out outside of that it's just that most regularly I was spending time with him in his room at night when he was winding down for the day and getting ready to go to bed and just checking in with him how's your day going what's going on how are things um, with you and 
I didn't really think that I made that big of an impact on his life. At the end of the year, he left me a note, and I still have it. And uh, one of the lines in this note says, um, I wouldn't have made it without you. And I don't know what that means. I don't know uh, exactly what he was going through. I don't know the context in which he said that. Um, but that's just an example of how the RA puts in time and hours and effort and energy and resources into their residence. And you don't really know what the outcome is because it's not really promised. It could go a number of ways. But you're faithful to do what you've been asked to do. And you have the chance to see the fruit of that every now and then. Someone say back to you, talk about the difference that you made in their life. Or thank you for all the time that you spent with them. And um, those kinds of things, you get to see people's lives change. You get to see people make huge progress. You get to see people uh, work through issues in their own life that they didn't, they weren't, going to make it here and with the help of an RA and many other people many other resources on campus but also the help of the RA what's a verse that relates to being an RA I think of Colossians 3.23 and whatever you do um, that phrase whatever you do is huge for the RA because like if you three were RAs right now what you guys do and how you spend your time is really up to you you will do things that other RAs won't do just because of your personality and the kind of residents that you relate with, the kind of residents that you connect with, different personalities that are brought into it. And whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. That, and do it all as if you're doing it unto God, that kind of drive behind the little decisions of whatever it is that we do, really whatever we do, yeah, all of that is important. And it all matters and it all makes a difference. You never know, like Alex, you never know, like the little things that I did because I allowed God to use me in those moments made a huge impact in his life. Procom got us like 